The Mazda 3 offers one of the best combinations of luxury and fun that can be had for well under $30,000. And for 2023, Mazda has made a few tweaks. Regardless, I'm worried for the fate of my good little friend, and today I'll tell you why. If you enjoy fun, detailed car content without fluff, consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications. Last year, the Mazda 3 sold about a third of what it did in 2015 here in the United States. And to help alleviate this pain, Mazda slightly reduced the configurations available for 2023. But before I discuss the changes, let me familiarize you with the trims. So you'll have the base trim, then the select, preferred carbon edition, which is the preferred with the Bose sound system, black wheels, red seats, and now the availability for all wheel drive. Then the premium trim sits on top of that, and that's what I have here today. And then we continue up to the turbo and turbo premium plus. And all of those trims also include the moniker 2.5, which now means very little because the two liter is gone for 2023. So everything is a 2.5 liter. Additionally, Mazda more quietly got rid of the premium front wheel drive automatic spec. If you go premium, you're either getting all wheel drive now or you're getting a manual transmission, which is actually really cool that they still offer that. I just wish it didn't require spending over $30,000. If you want more details on the manual, I made a full review on it earlier this year. It's a six speed in-house transmission from Mazda. The clutch and shifter have a short range of motion for a non-sports car. The feel is light but communicative and refined. Not the most satisfying gearbox to row but a delight to live with. And if you want an easy dealership experience, may I recommend the friendly people at Royal South Mazda Volvo in Bloomington, Indiana. Royal Mazda is a small, well-established dealership in the area. If you're in the market, check them out and tell them thanks for letting me test out various Mazdas over the years. Now, when it comes to engines, you'll have two different choices, a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated double overhead cam in line four or a turbocharged version of that. Just like most other Mazdas in the lineup now, this is going to make five more horsepower than it did last year with 191 horsepower, 186 pound feet of torque, and those peak in the same places they did too. But there is another difference and that's uh, now all naturally aspirated versions will come with Mazda's updated cylinder deactivation, which has improved the gas mileage figures and Mazda doesn't have too many reports of cylinder deactivation issues, but that's a somewhat controversial technology, especially among older GM truck owners. This isn't a truck, but if you want serious torque, you can still get it through the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, which produces 310 pound-feet of torque and 227 horsepower on regular gasoline with 250 on premium. I've said it many times and I'll say it again, this is one of my favorite turbocharged engines in mainstream cars because it really feels almost naturally aspirated. It uses a variable vein turbo. So at low RPMs, it will spool up the turbo much faster with the smaller vein and that will result in almost instantaneous boost. And the gas mileage still doesn't take a big hit. All of this is going to be hooked up to a six speed automatic transmission, which shifts slow but smooth. However, on rare occasions, it hunts for gears harder than Oregon people hunt for mushrooms. All wheel drive is also available, but Mazda keeps quietly removing its availability on lower trims as you can no longer get it on the select or preferred. While this primarily front wheel drive until it senses wheel slip, it is surprisingly capable and should be a great addition for northern climates. And since my car does have all-wheel drive equipped, let's see what it does with a quick little acceleration test to 60. No, I'm not going to shift manually, but since I have a premium trim, I do have paddle shifters if I want to. The all-wheel drive system was very good at registering a slight amount of slip and making the adjustment that it needed to. Smooth shifts, zero to 60 came in just at 8.4 seconds. So uh, respectable, a little bit slower than the manual transmission model that I drove not too long ago. 
Acceleration from this engine is linear and it shines with mid-range power. Oddly enough, hatchback models receive a more aggressive final drive ratio if you want a slightly more peppy Mazda 3. Behind the wheel of the Mazda 3 Turbo, a racy feel is absent despite big power and all-wheel drive like the old Mazda Speed 6. This is due to the six-speed auto's tuning and JDM fanboy disappointing suspension. The Mazda 3 Turbo feels more like a Grand Tourer that can effortlessly pick up speed rather than a firm riding, track time chasing, sport compact. When it comes to features, all Mazda 3s come with nice amenities like rain sensing windshield wipers and alloy wheels. Now on the exterior, we're going to have LED headlights standard, but if you step up to the premium, you'll get Mazda's signature lighting. No fog lights. If you go with a hatchback, you're going to get more dark accents, like this black grille, and the dark continues around the back. But if you go with the sedan, you'll have a more traditional chrome and alloy look. Around the side of the Mazda 3, it becomes pretty apparent that there's not a Walmart version of this car. Even at the base trim, it looks upscale. And that, I think that's an important thing to talk about with this car because a lot of people complain about it being more expensive than most of the competition. But if you look at the biggest player in my mind, the Honda Civic, it's about the same price. And this skips the CVT and has more power. So I still think this does have a value argument. However, if I'm going to talk down on the Civic, I should say that has a lot more practicality than this thing. I'll talk about that soon. When it comes to features, you will get Mazda's advanced keyless entry if you go for the select trim, not the base. But oddly enough, all cars get push button start. You also get 16 inch alloy wheels as standard. And then if you jump up, you will be bestowed with 18, it's like my car here. Again, these are black on the hatchbacks and silver on the sedans. Hold for the carbon and turbo models. One interesting quirk, the Mazda 3 does not have a power rear tailgate, but the hatch models still give you the ability to lock all doors after closing the hatch. Additionally, Mazda does offer a 360 view camera, but only if you feel like spending over 36 grand on a Turbo Premium Plus. Although this is a steal compared to the wallet assailant that is the new WRX. I've already done a few videos on the Mazda 3 over the years, so I'm not really gonna talk aesthetics, but I will say that whenever this generation came out, I was not a big fan of the slouch back three, but that's definitely grown on me over the years to the point where actually I really like it, maybe even more than the sedan now. Let me know your thoughts. Pulling up to highway speed in the Mazda 3 with the standard 2.5 liter is an easy task. This engine has plenty of power to move the car. The only time it struggles is sometimes being in the wrong gear. The six-speed auto isn't perfect with its decision-making skills, which definitely limits this engine more than the turbocharged variant. Every time I've driven that, it comes off noticeably more refined, along with, obviously, the more power there. And since it doesn't need to rev as high, it also sounds a little bit more upscale. For a compact car, this is more than acceptable. And honestly, the highway road noise is also well kept. RPMs at 65, we're just under 2,000. It's definitely on the quiet side for the segment. Give it a little bit of gas. As long as you give it some sort of prompting, it gets down to business, even accelerating 65 miles per hour up a grade. I'm not really giving it all that much beans. It's relatively relaxed, and if you want it to be athletic, get the turbo. But on top of a relatively serene ride, the cabin also exudes quality and thought. It seems like every point of interaction between yourself and the Mazda 3 were considered. Like for instance, this is not a super wide cabin. So if you're a little bit taller, your knees are going to rest on the plastics, but they actually covered them with a nice soft touch leather. And obviously the same thing with your elbows. And this comes on every Mazda 3, not just the top spec. The steering wheel is also a thinner, high quality leather and it's urethane on the base model, but even then it still doesn't feel too cheap. You have analog HVAC controls that come in a very petite package, but are intuitive. There's a, a shadow casted by the dashboard here, so there's no glare on the screen. You can see it very easily no matter the conditions. Plus you have, you know, nice tactile feeling buttons and switches here. Buttons here are in matte finish, not a gloss black plastic, as is pretty much everything that you're actually going to interact with. They did use a little bit of that shiny black plastic, which does accrue dust and fingerprints pretty easily, but it's not on touch points. And the thing that gets hated on the most with all of my Mazda videos is hands down the infotainment system. And honestly, I think it's underappreciated. No, 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 listen, listen. Yes, this is an oversimplified system. It could be better. 
not debating that. It's an 8.8 .8 inch screen here in the Mazda 3. The menus are limited. Some things just like tuning the radio just takes a couple extra steps. And wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, that's not here yet. You just have it wired. However, I actually prefer using the dial and button setup to control the infotainment because I don't have to pinpoint a finger while I'm driving. It's much more comfortable while you're in motion. It's relatively quick. There's nice clicks of, to each of the buttons and they fall exactly where my hand rests normally. And while we're talking tech, you also get a seven inch driver display. Doesn't have like a whole lot of different functions and whatnot, but it's integrated well. And really most things in this interior look really good. You have very soft touch materials, even in places that it makes no sense to have them, but that can help with insulation and just exudes a feeling of quality. Even when you shut the doors, for some reason, this has a more solid thud than even the Mazda CX-30. I love the speaker grills from the Bose system. The sound quality is great. It has good bass. You can get it loud without it distorting. It sounds like a base level luxury system. And if you go with the lower trim three, you don't get completely shafted. It still has an eight speaker Mazda acoustic audio system. And I have no complaints on that. The base setup offers great sound for 24 grand. Select the select and you also get less leatherette seats, leather shift knob, and dual zone automatic climate control. The preferred gets a sunroof. The premium gives you leather seats and a heads up display too. And the turbo cars add a heated steering wheel. Despite entering its fifth model year now, the Mazda 3 has arguably the most opulent looking and feeling cabin in the class while offering a very respectable amount of features, losing only to the Kia Hyundai top specs that offer things like ventilated front seats or heated rear seats. So the interior feels expensive and well thought out, but there are some flaws. The biggest one is the visibility. It feels like the Camaro of small hatchbacks. You just have tiny windows here and around back. Having blind spot monitoring in here is actually more important than it is in most other cars. Some may see this as sporty character, but I see it pushing away a lot more people than bringing them in. Another thing, the seats are great in most ways, but after you start driving with them for a while, you notice that the top portion kind of squeezes your shoulder blades in a little bit, and that can be a little uncomfortable, but at least the material itself is pretty soft and has nice bolstering. I think if you're wider, this is gonna be a tighter vehicle to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Having to swing into it is a whole nother thing. But here at six foot three, I have enough space I could drive in this for a long time, especially with the power heated lumbar adjusting seats that you get with the preferred trim. This would be a great road trip car, unless you're in the back. Ooh. With the back seat set to a comfortable yet not excessive position for myself, I... Oh. Ah. Gotta watch out for the door handle here, um, or else it will dig into your tendons. If I maneuver my knees around, I can fit back here. And the seats are still plush. I have nice soft touch materials where my elbow lies, um, but you're not gonna get rear seat vents. If you have a tall driver up front, the back seat is just not too accommodating. Most others in the class are going to improve upon this. I won't call this horrendous because again, I am tall. My head is you know just barely scraping the roof. So I could sit back here and the nice seats make it reasonably comfortable. The space is just a bit of a letdown. The trunk of the Mazda 3 is a respectable space. This has some furniture hauling capabilities, and I would say better than the Toyota Corolla hatchback, but I think it's a little tighter than the Subaru Impreza and much less spacious than the Honda Civic. That said, there is still a spare tire and enough space for most four-person weekend trips, just maybe not a whole week. Now on smooth roads, the Mazda 3 is a delight. The steering on center is not very quick, but there's virtually no play in the steering. It doesn't have a disconnected feeling. It's extremely predictable, and there's still some feedback coming through the wheel here. Not only is it fun, it's natural. And I also really like the steering weight in this. It's not too heavy, but it makes you work a little bit. And I think in a car like this, it just comes off even more playful. Yeah, I wouldn't call it as uh, engaging as some Mazda 3s in the past. And even when it comes to body roll, it's not entering sports sedan levels of control, but it's definitely good for a compact car. I think it wouldn't be an overstep for me to call this uh, among the best handling cars, not just most fun, but best handling cars in the segment. One thing I really like about this, the brakes are really nice and smooth, but have a good bite. They're just 
very well calibrated. It only begins to let you down over the worst of roads like I have here today. The ride, while smooth, does get disrupted well, quite a bit. Some of that's down to a somewhat firm suspension. It's really not overly stiff. It seems like Mazda made a big effort to not have the Mazda 3 show the flaws of having a torsion beam suspension. But still, if you have a lot of neglected roads around you, you drive this, you drive a Subaru Impreza, you'll notice the difference. That said, it's not something that I think is unlivable. It just seems a little bit more jittery than I would probably prefer. What I really like about this, even on these bad roads, is how insulated the cabin still feels. While the road does translate into the seat, it rarely crashes through and the car remains quiet and in control. Another thing that won't get violent is running costs. Gas mileage on the 2.5 improved slightly for the automatic, but now the manual transmission is finally rated more accurately, showing the same mileage as the auto. Additionally, Mazda has built a reputation for reliability in the last 10 years. While there are some reports of initial oil consumption with the turbo engine and some other Mazdas, I see no such thing here. The naturally aspirated engines are little brutes. The transmissions are solid. The biggest issues with this generation were initially related to the AC and the autonomous braking system spazzing out. Some also complained about rear view mirrors falling off and speaker failure. After a couple more years, the main problem that I still see reported from NHSTA and carcomplaints.com is airbag malfunctions that require replacing a side airbag. Windshields easily cracking aren't unheard of either. Overall, nothing seems too too consistent or serious anymore, so if you highly value reliability, I feel comfortable recommending this next to a Corolla. Mazda also usually doesn't do the best when it comes to active safety tech. Yes, you do have autonomous braking standard. You do also have radar cruise control standard, lane departure prevention standard, blind spot monitoring if you get the select trim, which I think most of those are what people want. However, it is missing lane centering unless you get the top spec trim and doesn't work at higher speeds anyway. It's called traffic jam assist. But Mazda skimping on lane assist fits the approach of the Mazda 3. It's the small car meant for those who prioritize the actual driving experience over most other aspects. Plus, it's still practical and civilized enough to work for compact buyers willing to make a couple compromises. The visibility, backseat space, and busy ride on bad roads deserve some attention from Mazda. However, if they spent most of their development cash on crafting an upscale interior, second nature steering, and all-wheel drive compatibility, I'm okay with its shortcomings. And that's why this is my personal favorite car in the class. But let's face it, I'm a car-obsessed 23-year-old that panics at the thought of children and owning a boring ride. And for 2023, Mazda's made a few tweaks. Twee? A demographic that I feel most new car buyers won't identify with. Just having bad visibility in a tight back seat will keep this from being considered by many. I think there will always be an audience that appreciates what this three has to offer, but it's more niche than all other competitors. If you're looking for a small family car, I'd recommend the Civic over this. If you want a cheap quality ride, the Corolla or Impreza can be had for less. But if you're in the minority of people who want a small car that looks, feels, and handles a class above on most roads, and you can accept a couple trade-offs, the Mazda 3 is an exceptional offering in the class with a dependable powertrain to boot. Sadly though, I'm uncertain a small car formula like this can exist for much longer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like to help me show up the YouTube algorithm. If you want more, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And thank you to my very loyal patrons. I'll catch you in the next one.